Another um, appendix, appendix that we have here are the major characters in the text. So this can be highly, uh, you know, very useful. You have to use this. I still have to use it even after teaching the text for several years now. So part of oral tradition is uh, you have lots of characters. You have lots of characters with uh, different names and um, names that are being used in different variations. And so, you know, this is part of, like I said, oral culture, which tends to uh, push toward multiplicity and fluidity, right? Giving people multiple names or, you know, variations on names, right? Or playing with their names, right? Whereas in our Western culture, our textual culture, and textual culture might be the operative idea here, we have a tendency to uh, singularize our names, uh, to limit our names. Um, and this you know, definitely has something to do with, I think, textual culture in terms of uh, you know, signing our name. You know, we want to make it efficient, short, and sweet. Um, so yeah, I think it's definitely a textual sort of culture sort of aspect here. And so when we are confronted with multiple names in a text, it's difficult for us as textual readers. It's a similar experience we have when we are reading about genealogies, like you get in the Bible, he begat, he begat, uh, the Greek chorus, um, or the Shakespearean chorus, if you've ever read Greek tragedy. Uh, so listing of names and, and, and uh, listing of genealogies, uh, sort of choral moments, these tend to be, you know, poetic and, uh, used for uh, for a lot of like memory or mnemonic reasons that are absolutely essential for oral culture. But for textual culture people, uh, we see them as inefficient. We see them as boring. We see them as uh, re repelling or retarding action. Uh, so anyway, uh, you want to make sure that you use this uh, index so that you, uh, you know, when you come across a name that you don't know, just go back here and take a look at it, okay? And you can place it um, in context, okay? Uh, and then we have further readings here, which, uh, you know, you can look at at your own leisure, okay? So that is the uh, podcast or the episodes of this po podcast that speak to the textual apparatus. So what's there in the text, how you can use it. Uh, I'll look at more of the text itself in further podcasts, and I'll talk about more apparatus type stuff.